Hey everybody, welcome back. This is AJ. I am Texas Green Tea on Twitter, and this is a how to build a dogfight flight sim game in Unity 3D. This is video two of the series, and we're going to start building the bullet functionality so that both the opponent and the player can fire their guns at each other. Um, before we get, in and get into that, I want to uh, cover a couple of cosmetic things. The default Unity scene that we're using for this template um, has a black ground as a skybox, and I don't really like that because it's very tough to see when you're getting close to the ground. Uh, when when we add the ability to crash, we are going to have some problems uh, avoiding the ground if we can't see it as a, a unique texture. So uh, one of the first things I want to do here is add some ground. We could go to uh, right-click 3D object terrain, but I'm going to go simpler this time. I want to use just a simple cube. Uh, you see that jumped into the scene at kind of a random place, so I'm going to go to its position transform and zero it out so that it ends up right in the very middle of the world. Okay, it's right under the plane there. Um, and I want to stretch it out toward the horizon in both directions. Now, if we stretch it on Y, it's going to go up into the air, so we don't want that. We just want to do the X and the Z uh, scale. So we're going to do, say, let's go 100,000 on uh, X and the same thing on Z. Okay, so now you can see it's going out really far. If we really zoom out, we can see how far it goes, but that's long enough. That's going to give us plenty of flying distance. Um, I also want to add a grass texture to this so that it's not uniform white. Whenever it's a uniform color, you can't really tell one spot on it from the next, so if we get some texture in there, it'll be easier to track against where we are in the air. Um, so let's go into the uh, material properties. And uh, I, you know, I'm uh, I don't even need to do that. Let me go into uh, project settings. I'm just going to type in grass. If you've downloaded standard assets, you should have some grass. Um, this grass hill albedo is what I want. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto the grass object, uh, onto the cube object. Sorry. Let's rename this from cube something more specific. Let's call it ground. And then in the uh, material properties, um, you can adjust the tiling if you don't feel like it's quite right. It's looking pretty good to me, but uh, for whatever reason, if you don't like the tiling, then you can adjust the resolution here. Sometimes when you import these, it starts at, at resolution of 1, which is, in this case, very low resolution. So I'm going to pump that back up to 100 for our purposes. Okay, and so now this thing is pretty... Um, high up compared to the uh, uh, rest of the objects in the scene. If we zoom back in here, you can see it's kind of covering the ground, the uh, runway that we had before. So I'm just going to lower it down. Oops, uh, grab the ground again. I'm going to lower it down so that, there we go, we can see the runway again. Um, so, so the grass is out of the way. It's covering everything toward the horizon. That'll give us plenty of flying distance. Last cosmetic thing I want to do is make sure that as we fly, we can see far enough off into the distance. Because if you'll notice, when you use a standard Unity camera, um, I believe it's in this template. Here we go, main camera. Um, if, if you observe your main camera object, you have this thing called clipping plane. And this determines um, the, the near and far extremities of what is going to appear in your view in, in the camera when you're playing. So you open up your game view, how far toward the horizon can you see? That's going to be determined by the far clipping plane. Right now, by default, it's set to a thousand. So let's uh, observe this. As I hit play, I'm going to fly up into the air and see what that gets me. Especially if I fly up nice and high. Now observe the horizon line. You see how it's a little jittery? And it's pretty low compared to the skybox in the background. There's a lot of black in between the ground and the sky. It feels like it's just cutting off a little bit too soon. And that's because, if I pause it here, that's because the far clip plane is a little bit too close for a flight sim game. If you're if you're walking on the ground, if you got a regular player controller, it might be okay to have a 5,000 clip plane. Um, but when you're in a flight sim, you probably want it farther. So I just doubled it by turning it to 10,000. Probably still not enough. See, it still looks a little choppy. You want to get it 
really far out there. I, I made a uh, 100,000 meter uh, ground object, so I want to get at least half of that going so that if I start in the center, I can see pretty much all the way to the end of it. You can see how far it extended um, when I set it to 50,000 instead. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's much better. It's, it, it might not be perfect. You can play with uh, getting the graphics looking really good on your own um, with playing with features like this, but we're it in right now because this is just a prototype. Okay, so the main meat of this video is all about bullets. So we're going to uh, create a good looking bullet right now. In order to do that, what we're going to start with is, uh, like with most things, standard assets that Unity provides you free of charge. Um, we're going to go into the particle systems because if you imagine what a bullet's supposed to look like, it's it might need to glow a little bit. It's probably going to be like a yellowish fire effect. Let's see what we've got in prefab. Playing with a bunch of these in the past, uh, just off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure the flare is the one that I'm going to want to use. So I'm going to drag that into my scene and zoom in on it. Let's uh, get it all by itself by dragging it up here so that we can uh, get a good reference view. Okay. Um, so this is the flare object. This is going to do pretty well to act as our bullet, um, but I uh, I need to make a few adjustments. For example, the smoke, it feels like it's going to be too cluttery, so I'm just going to delete the smoke effect out of that. And, and now this is a prefab, you can tell because it's blue, and we just dragged it out of Unity's Particle Systems prefab folder. Um, what it's telling me is if I delete one of its sub-objects, it's going to break the connection between the instance and and its original prefab, meaning if I ever change this flare prefab, then this won't get changed because I'm breaking the connection. I'm okay with that because I'm going to create my own bullet prefab in a minute, as you'll see. So we're going to continue on that. Um, we're going to change the name of this to bullet. And you, if you notice the uh, center um, glowing ball, that's the flare object that we have at the top here. And then the sparks is everything else flying out the sides of it. So we're going to start by resizing the, uh, the bullet flare a little bit. We'll click into the particle system um, and scroll down. We have the start size here is listed as 0.5 to 1. I'm going to pump that up quite a bit. And notice the size of the uh, glowing ball in the center as I do this. When I go 3 to 4 five or something like that. It's uh, quite a bit larger now. It'll be more noticeable in the scene, which is fine. These things are going to be jettisoning out of our plane uh, at rapid speed, so we're not going to be able to tell their size very clearly as they fly off into the distance. But as they leave, we want them to be nice and big so that they're at least somewhat visible when they first leave the plane. Um, now, other than that, we do want a trail to exit out of the bullet, um, but we, we definitely don't want the sparks flying off in every direction. So we're going to change that by going to the shape component. Component, um, and uh, selecting the uh, shape attribute as cone instead of, well, that's interesting, that doesn't look like a cone to me. Let's bring this up here so we can see it well. Ah, yes, of course. So I see what was happening here. So I've got the flare selected, and I'm looking to change the shape of the sparks. I actually need to make sure the sparks is selected, because each of these, if you notice, has a unique particle system. Flare particle system and sparks particle system. So if I go into the sparks shape and switch sphere to cone. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Now if you notice the uh, sparks are trailing toward the floor, it's because they're being affected by gravity. I don't want that because I want to get rid of most of these sparks. It's a little bit much. Um, so I'm going to switch the gravity to zero and now you notice they're trailing off straight back toward the end of the cone. Now the cone is dispersing too much so I'm going to shore that up a little bit tighten it. There we go. And we still have too much of a trail here, so I'm going to shorten the lifetime on these sparks quite a bit as well. I'm going to send that down to 0.5, I think. Now if I zoom in, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Um, now, I think I undid the uh, size on the uh, uh, on the flare itself, so let's bring that back up. There we go. Okay, so we have uh, kind of a, a finished draft as far as what we're going to uh, do with the bullet. You can find lots of great uh, particle effect prefabs in the asset store. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, uh, but if you want to put something together quick and free, this is the way to do it. Um, so I'm going to uh, 
um, take this, oh, I, it looks like I undid the name as well, put that back on. Um, I'm going to take this bullet, I'm going to make a prefab out of it, but before I do that, general rule of thumb that I like to adhere to, anytime I'm making a prefab, I uh, first off I want to create a, a prefabs folder at the top of my assets directory um, if I don't have that already. Um, and then I want to make sure that I zero out the transform because this bullet is going to be instantiated via scripts. Um, into the scene on the fly as we press the trigger button and w at this moment we don't know what position those bullets are going to be in when they enter the scene and so if we specify any position then this will actually just come in as an offset for wherever they are so we don't want that we want the bullet to come straight out of the gun if it comes out of the gun plus whatever it says here it's going to be in the wrong place um, so we're going to delete the transform position so that it's zeroed out back where we found it when we first started and uh, and then we can just drag this bullet object into the prefabs folder and create a let's see it's I already have a bullet here because I've done this before so it named it bullet one I'm gonna change that to bullet v4 because you can see I've done this several times um, so I'm going to delete all of the bullet instances that I have in the scene right now um, because now I have the prefab which I can use as a template anytime I want to bring the bullet back into the scene um, so I undid that and uh, the uh, next video we are going to cover um, how to uh, uh, create a gun that actually instance that bullet on the fly um, so, so we're going to save that for the next video after that we're going to get into exploring explosions and uh, AI for the opponent, um, but we're getting very close to a point where we can actually um, try and shoot our opponent down once we get up in the air. Um, so stick around, the next video is going to be fun. We're going to finish up bullet functionality next.